Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. Now, I know I told you all that I would stay away from the budget, especially until I saw the way that the dust was settling, because I just assumed it would be more of the same, because I understand you know, economics, and I know that there's no way to tax yourself into prosperity, and the direction that this country is going, Canada is going, is completely and utterly toward a failed state. Now, that is being driven largely by the policies of the current federal and supportive NDP governments. However, I didn't expect them to just come right out and say it, this obvious um, push towards full-blown communism, which I prefer to call Marxism, and I would explain that, but at a different time. Now, I uh, even the CBC has taken a run. So I'm going to talk about the, the this idea of this... Uh, capital gains tax on the wealthiest and the CBC, like I was saying, took a run at uh, Richie Valdez, which is the MP of small businesses. She was on there and like, a, you know, you would think that the, that the CBC would give her all the treatment that they always give them, right? Ask her what her favorite color is and all that kind of stuff. But they said some things right out loud, which makes me think that there are perhaps people inside the uh, upper crust of the CBC who are going to be negatively impacted by this new t change in taxes. However, before I get into it, I would encourage you all to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Tell all your friends. I mean, some of the things I say, I'm sure, are getting me turned down in the algorithm, so the notification bell ensures that I will come directly into your feed. Let's get into it. So while individually, if they if they were say working you know in in a, in a hospital, they would not necessarily be affected by the new capital gains inclusion. But if their corporate structure is such that they're relying on corporate investments to pay for their future and their retirement, they're going to be hit. And, and that in a country that's already struggling to have enough family doctors, this creates a disincentive for some of them to work in Canada. Uh, we recognize that, but one of the things that we all, we will continue to do is encourage um, foreign credential recognition. But the investments we made with foreign credentialing, we've already made a significant investment in previous budgets, and in this year we've topped that up. Also encourage them to get more jobs here and fill um, the desperate la labor market needs that are uh, that are required in our healthcare industry. The doctors who are here now. Uh, who uh, you know are, are, are set up uh, through you know the existing corporate structure that relies heavily on capital gains income uh, to, to, for the, for their retirement and for their future because they wouldn't have a pension in this sort of a situation. If they balk at uh, the situation that has been created by this change, I mean, how do you deal with that? The goal is to not increase the, the gap in, in medical coverage, right? So, how do you respond to the concerns being raised by people in that sector that this is, is potentially punitive to them? If I take a step back to what I mentioned earlier, and you heard the Prime Minister said it, what we're really trying to do is really create a Canada that is fair for every generation. If we think about all the benefits that will help for young uh, Gen Z. Okay, so a couple of things she said there that I want to point out. First of all, she said that, that we were, were working on foreign credentials, which is really not accurate because the foreign credentials push was being is being made by three or four of the provinces. And the federal government has to simply enact legislation that will make it simpler for the um, credentials to be scrutinized, not to be approved. What that indicates, though, is that you have to bring the education on board, right? You can't just say, well, this is good enough. The doctors that run the schools, the people that are the other the educators, they are the ones that are going to be the, the put the stamp on it. Because if something goes wrong, you're going to say, "Well, where did this person get their qualifications?" And the first thing you're going to say is, "Well, they got it from the University of Downtown, you know, Downtown Soapbox, right?" So you'll want to know that the school the, the school will want to know that the people that they're putting into the field are absolutely and utterly. Uh, Tar it, like, you know, they won't be able to blow back up on them, right? I'm not saying to you that they're doing it for some other reason than that. They just want to make sure that their reputation is, is protected because schools rely heavily on reputation for enrollment. The fact that she said, well, we've done, we've already put money into this and then, and then in this budget, we're going to top it up. What does that indicate to you? Because what that really means is that what they are offering financially is not enough. It's not, it's not bringing people in. And so they have to add more to it. I think it's a perfect example is when they said that would you pay ten thousand for for Nova Scotia's uh, heat um, heat pumps, and now they're up to thirty thousand dollars per installation for heat pumps, which is all tax dollars. And I, I have to ask myself, at what point do you are you just giving away too much money? Then she says, "Well, it's all about making it fair and, and equitable." You heard the prime minister, and I'm going to let the prime minister, in his own words, talk to you about this 
what can only be described as Marxism. And so that's where we're going now. We're going to listen to Justin Trudeau talk about how it's all about being fair and all about that kind of thing. And the thing that I want you to understand is that when they ask you for more than you're willing to give, when they ask you for, excuse me, when they ask you for more than your fair share for what the 99% of people are already giving, they're, they're asking for two reasons. One of the reasons is that they, they've taxed the 99% to exhaustion. There's just no more money to take from them. And now what they want to do is create a class divide, right? Now they want to say, okay, well, if you really want to live a good life, you have to go after the people that make a little money that work their asses off their entire lives. And all of a sudden have one or two little investment properties. And it's all their fault that the nine years of continual and com constant downgrade of the Canadian standard of living, is clearly the doctor's fault. Anyway, let's listen to uh, prime minister Trudeau in his own words. This budget is focused on fairness. The dream of home ownership is getting further and further away every year, no matter how hard they work, no matter the side hustles they pull together. Rent is taking up a huger and huger part of their, their, uh, their monthly budget. And the idea of setting aside to be able to save up for a down payment or eventually being able to get a mortgage seems further and further out of reach. That's why with this budget, we're bringing back fairness in the system for young people. And we're doing it by asking people to, uh, who are the absolute wealthiest in this country to contribute a little bit more. I understand for some people this may cost more if they sell a cottage or a secondary residence. But young people can't buy their primary residences yet. It's a person who's worked their whole life. I mean, let's talk about the, the amount of effort that they put in. And now I just want to, I'm going to, I don't want to talk too much about it right now, but it, cause I just realized that when he says, um, asking, he's enacting legislation. He's not asking you for money. He's taking your money. And previous generations could take for granted as just coming in this country. There are those who've been very, very successful off the way the system used to be who don't want to see the system changed. But this is about intergenerational fairness. It's also about making sure our economy succeeds into the future. Just like every other thing that the, gov the government says, every time these guys talk about their budget, it's always about the future. It's always about your economy working down the road. And yet we, we're nine years down the road now and nothing that he said in 2017 is working. The uh, Canadian Medical Association says the uh, proposed changes to the capital gains taxation will affect doctors' uh, retirement savings, uh, and in turn, it could affect recruitment and retention of uh, physicians. Are you willing to make changes or exceptions for doctors? Um, so yes, we are asking the most successful in this country to do a little bit more to make sure that everyone can see themselves in the success of this country. And that's something that it bewilders me a little bit that the Conservative Party is standing against. It was very clear over the weekend uh, that they are not in favour of asking the wealthiest to pay a little bit more to create success for young people. I think that's wrong. Again, not asking, demanding, making it law, forcing you to pay extra. It's not a, it's not a request. And... <clears throat> One of the things that you need to consider is where does this end up, right? Where, how, how far does it go? Now he's going to go on and tell you how it's all going to save the next generation because this extra taxation that is going directly into the pocket of the government is somehow making houses cheaper for young people. It's amazing. The logic, I mean, the, it's, it's, it, I swear to, I swear to you, it, I can't even fathom how they get there. And it's fair to ask those who've succeeded extraordinarily well to be there to make sure that a lot more people have the opportunity to succeed in the coming years through their hard work. Uh, well, first of all, first of all, very clearly, this change to capital gains does not affect anyone selling their primary residence. That is extremely important to know. But at a time when young people have started to give up on the dream of eventually ever being able to own a home, it was really important to rebalance the situation. 
See, I didn't realize it. He's Robin Hood. How could I not see it? You know, he's, he's taking from the wealthy and giving it to the people that he made poor because he destroyed the middle class, because he put such a stranglehold on building new residential places to live because he wants everyone to be crammed into these 15-minute cities. Be aware of what he said about selling of the house. Oh, no, this doesn't, have, this doesn't apply to people who are selling their first house, their only house, their primary residence. So if your mother or your father, your parents downgraded their house and went and bought a condo, and now you're sitting at home and they, for whatever reason, that condo ends up in your possession and you sell that. Well, that's not your primary residence. So anything that you might make off that property, we're taking 67% of. This is the way that they think that somehow you're going to make it fair to the, to the next generation. So the, the, the bank is going to want their cut. Everybody's going to want their cut. So this is only going to increase. Just taxes never make things less expensive. Abundance makes things less expensive. Uh, grants make things less less expensive, right? So what we should be talking about is building outside of the current met metropolitan areas. What we need to be talking about is, is the infrastructure of this country. The infrastructure is the only way that we're going to solve this problem because people, too many people live in too tightly packed regions and it, it causes a pressed on demand, which I can tell you in great, um, I can tell you I observed happened through the eighties when women started to go back to work. All of a sudden, the house of women having a second income in the home and, and marriages were still holding strong in those days. Now, all of a sudden, they had the money to move up because there was a secondary income. And that created a bidding war, which still grows on today, despite if you want to participate in it or you don't want to participate in it. And when I said to you earlier, where, where does this end up? Well, I can tell you that as well because I watched it happen. Because what everybody seems to forget is that, um, like I told you, it's, it's, a, it's a law of uh, diminishing returns. We all can look up the Berlin Wall, and you think in your mind that it's a wall. It's keeping people out. Nothing could be further from the truth. They built that wall in Berlin to keep people from crossing from East Germany into West Germany. They built that wall to keep people in. People weren't allowed to travel from the USSR, which is collectively the entire region, right? So you have Russia, then you have the... United Soviet Socialist Republic, USSR. Soviet is the word that was attributed to the people who are Marxists. That's a quick history lesson. What matters here is that the people that were that would cross that wall were trying to escape. Arnold Schwarzenegger is probably the most famous of them. He had to escape the Eastern Bloc so he could end up a famous movie star only to turn around and tell you that you have to do what the government tells you. It's kind of weird. However, the reason that I say that is to you because that's where it ends, right? Now, doctors say, well, screw it. I'm just going to take my, my education, my enormous 15-year education on top of my 20 years of experience, and I'm going to Florida where nobody's going to harass me. I'm going to Texas where nobody's going to harass me, and that'll be next. Oh, no, nobody's allowed to travel. Nobody is allowed to travel. Just they'll lock it down just like they did during COVID. They already got a lot of experience at it because they cannot tax you into, into prosperity and they can't stop themselves from trying to, to maintain control. None of them have just said, you know what? We've lost. We, we screwed it all up and let's just get this over with. They're all saying to themselves that it, now it's the doctor's fault, right? First it was the right wing, then it, was, it became COVID, and then it was Putin. Now it's, you know, it just keeps going and going and going. It's never them. It's never, ever, 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 ever them. They're just going to keep taxing you to death, trying to, con trying to convince you that by taxing you, they're going to make your life better. It's absurd. And it's not going to work. And I'm going to wrap here. I, would, uh, I appreciate you listening. I would encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Tell all your friends. I'll talk to you next time.